Welcome to Test Crackers. We're on a mission to make preparing for the GMAT and the GRE not only not suck, but actually be awesome. We put tons of time and energy into giving our students the best possible experience that they can get in our live, in-person, and online classes, and we're excited to bring some of that care and attention to detail to a more public format via YouTube videos. My name's Isaac. I've been teaching with Test Crackers for a couple years now, but I've been helping people optimize their performance on standardized tests for over a decade. And I'm the host of a popular podcast called the GMAT Strategy Podcast, and I have a study accelerator for the GMAT that I'll mention a little bit later. For now, I'm really excited to talk to you about how to decide between whether you should take the GMAT or the GRE when you're applying to business school. And I think that this decision is going to have a major impact on how awesome your test prep experience is and frankly, the amount of pain that you experience while you're preparing. So hopefully we can save you quite a bit of pain and increase your awesomeness significantly. So first question to ask when you are preparing for the GMAT and the GRE is do the target programs that you want to go to accept both of the tests? Because if they don't, if it's only GMAT or only GRE, well, that decision just got a lot easier. <laughs> um, but here are a couple things to think about. The GMAT only is going to get you into MBA programs and then some type of professional degrees, usually in the finance world. Whereas the GRE is a better option if you're considering dual degree programs, if you definitely know you're going to do a dual degree program, or if you're maybe considering eventually doing some degrees beyond the MBA, that score is valid for five years and could save you a lot of time and energy down the line if you think you might want another graduate degree later on. Now, the good news about the GMAT versus the GRE is that the content is basically identical on the math side. So if you've been studying for either exam for a while, the good news is a lot of those skills are going to translate to the other exam. On the verbal side, things are a little bit different. There's about a 50% overlap. Both test your reading comprehension in very similar ways. Both, te both test your understanding of the structure of logic and how to answer questions about logical arguments in very, very similar ways. So again, if you've been studying that stuff, then that's good news. Uh, but the place that they really diverge is the verbal section on the GMAT is going to be about 30% testing your grammatical knowledge. So if you feel strong with grammar or you've tried some sentence correction questions and you feel good about those, then the GMAT is probably a good bet for you. Whereas if you feel that maybe you're not so great at learning grammatical concepts and learning to apply those in a wide variety of situations and you're much stronger with memorizing vocabulary words, then the GRE might be a better fit for you because the GRE about 50% of your score is based on vocabulary on the verbal side. Now the good side of that is that if you memorize a lot of vocabulary words and you're strong with memorization, that's gonna really, really help you out versus if you don't wanna memorize a comparatively smaller subset of grammatical principles and then spend a pretty good amount of time learning to apply those on the exam, then the GRE is gonna be a good bet for you. Now the downside of all the vocabulary, again, 50% of your verbal score is gonna come for vocabulary knowledge on the GRE, is that luck of the draw does play a slightly bigger role in the, the GRE than it would in the GMAT. Look at the draw plays a small role in both exams and of course general luck of how you're feeling on that particular day, etc. Plays a, plays a role but if you optimize your prep the right way then you can decrease the amount of luck that you need to rely on. Now the biggest difference between these exams and probably one of the main decision-making factors for most people is how they're scored. And the GMAT is scored based on the difficulty level of questions that you are, are seeing during the exam. And that is a brand new test format for most people. A lot of people struggle to adapt to that. But the good news of it is accuracy on specific topics is much less important. For example, I can still get a great GMAT quant score and, and skip every single geometry question that they show me. How's that even possible? I'll, I'll link a video for you at the end of this video in the description where I talk a little bit more about how the GMAT scoring algorithm works. And of course, if you decide to take a class with us, we're happy to explain that to you in person. Um, but the main thing that you wanna be thinking about right now is am I a strong generalist, meaning I'm pretty good across all content areas, or am I really, really great at some things and then really, really terrible at other things? If you're really, really terrible at some things and you've tried to improve them or you don't like the idea of, of having to improve those, then the GMAT might be a better bet for you because you can sort of hide your weaknesses a little bit more easily there. 
The GRE, your score is essentially based on accuracy. It does adapt a little bit from section to section. If you do very well on the first math or verbal section that you see, then your second section is gonna be hard. If you do okay, your second section will be medium. And if you do poorly on the first section, your second section will be easy. And that can affect your score for sure. So you do need a strong performance on the first section. But for most people, that adaptive nature of the GRE just doesn't end up being a big sticking point. Whereas with the GMAT, you're adapting from question to question. And so when you get a question right, you get a harder question. When you get a question wrong, you get an easier question. And that's where that ability to hide some of your weaknesses comes from because the GMAT expects you to miss a pretty significant number of questions. And that's how they use the difficulty level ranges to differentiate between candidates. The advantage of taking the GRE is it's a more familiar format. So you won't have to learn a new strategy and you won't have to be thinking so much about which questions you should do and which questions you should not do. And for some of you, that's going to be a big advantage because you don't wanna be thinking about that. You just wanna take a test that's in a familiar format where your job is just to get as many questions right as you possibly can. And if you're in that boat, then the GRE can be a good bet for you. Uh, but unfortunately, the downside of that is it's less forgiving of knowledge gaps. So you need to be a strong generalist. And you know, the truth of the matter is, if you're aiming for a super, super high score, like let's say a 730 or above on the GMAT, or what I would call an equivalent score on the GRE would be like a 165 or above, something like that, then you're gonna need to be pretty rock solid on almost everything. But on the GRE, it's still gonna be less forgiving, even in those top range scores. You can maybe miss couple questions in the math sections on the GRE and still get that kind of top 90th percentile, 95th percentile score, which I know a lot of you are going to be gunning for if you're aiming for business school. Whereas on the GMAT, I could probably get only 70% of the questions right in the GMAT quant section and still get a comparatively high math score. On the verbal side on the GMAT, my accuracy needs to be a little bit better than 70%, more like 80 to 90%, depending on where I miss those questions. And again, I'll link a video that explains a little bit more about the scoring algorithm if you want to know more about that. Um, but for now, that's a main differentiator between people, and you're not going to really be able to make a great decision about which one's best for you until you try a practice test of each, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, some of you might already know right off the bat that you're going to be better at one and, and worse at the other, and that's fantastic. Hopefully, then this video has helped you make your decision. Some other important differences to keep in mind. The first is that on the GMAT in the math section, you are only allowed to do math by hand. So if you're strong with hand computation and or mental math, then the GMAT's gonna be a really good bet for you. If you're horribly, horribly weak or you just don't like hand computation and you're really worried about that, um, then the GRE is probably a better bet for you because there's an on-screen calculator that you can use. A lot of people complain about the speed. I don't think that's a super big deal because you can number lock your keypad on the actual exam and use the keypad to type into the calculator. And if you practice enough, it's the, the speed will become a non-issue, in my personal opinion. Many, many other people disagree with that, um, but I do not. I think that that is the case. And I think the calculator can be a big advantage for you if you're worried about your computation skills. Now, a couple other differences. On the GMAT, you get this section called integrated reasoning, which is kind of like combining your quantitative skills and your verbal skills. And if you already work in a business type role like uh, marketing or data analysis, things like that, then integrated reasoning is probably not going to be too tough for you because you do this type of stuff all the time in your day-to-day -day job. Integrated reasoning questions are about giving you a bunch of text that's combined with some numbers, and you have to answer questions about how those numbers in that text are, are interacting. Um, if you've ever had to look at a spreadsheet and then look at an email from someone and then make inferences and recommendations based on that kind of qualitative email information and that quantitative spreadsheet information, then integrated reasoning is going to be no problem. If you're excited to learn about that, then it's a good thing that you're going to business school because you're probably going to be doing a lot of that. Um, and if you're excited to learn about that before business school, then GMAT could be the GMAT could be a good route for you because you're going to be working on those skills as you study integrated reasoning and the quantitative and verbal sections of the GMAT. If you're, if you're turned off by that and you're not excited at all about doing that kind of stuff, then the GRE might be a better bet for you because instead of the integrated reasoning section there, you get an extra essay. Now for business schools, the essays are not super important on either exam. You're really just trying to clear the, uh, the 20th percentile on the GMAT. That's a four or better on the essay out of six. And I don't remember what the GRE percentiles are off the top of my head, but again, you know, four or better, which I think is maybe like 60 or 70th percentile or something like that. You don't need to absolutely rock the essays to get into business school. You just need to survive them. Um, but the downside of the GRE extra essay is it can be a little bit of a drain in terms of fatigue because you, you have to take 
the essays first. There's two essays, it's the first hour of the GRE and you, you can't change that format. So you're already an hour deep into writing essays before you see your first math or first verbal section. One advantage of the GMAT is you can choose the order in which you take the section. So you can do the math section first if you wanna start with that. You can do the verbal section first and then you can save the essay in integrated reasoning, which frankly are a little bit less important for your business school admission for the end of the exam. And, and that is kind of nice. So if you're worried about fatigue, then that's something to consider because the GRE is also a little bit longer than the GMAT. Um, another important difference to consider is two question formats in the math section, which are both unique to the exam. So data sufficiency questions don't show up on any other exam besides the GMAT, and I've never seen a quantitative comparison question on any other exam besides the GRE. Um, I'm gonna be publishing some videos about data sufficiency and quantitative comparison in the future, but for now, because this is our first video on the channel, if you're watching this relatively uh, recently after it comes out, then I'd encourage you to just do a little bit of web research on data sufficiency and quantitative comparison, and just find a couple practice questions, maybe a video or two about how to strategize on them, and then try a couple questions and see if one or the other resonates with you more or less, because if data sufficiency is really, really hard for you and you really don't like it, and you're really confused by it, uh, first of all, you're not alone, that's super common, and you definitely can improve if you decide the GMAT's a better option for you. But if you realize that data sufficiency is really holding back your score, that's almost half of the questions that you're gonna see on the GMAT quant section. So that, that's a big deal. Data sufficiency is definitely a big deal if you're considering the GMAT. Whereas quantitative comparisons questions, that's the, you're not gonna see as many of those necessarily on the GRE quant section. It, there's still a lot of them, but it's more like 30%, not like 40 or 50% in the case of some, some GMATs. So it's, it's less of a factor in your GRE score. And some people just find it to be a little bit easier to think through. Some people hate quantitative comparison. They find data sufficiency much easier to think through. And again, you're not really gonna know until you get a little bit of experience under your belt. So that's definitely a decision factor that you're going to want to consider and put a little bit of time into. Now, what are, what are your next steps if you're trying to make this decision? Um, if you're just starting out in your preparation and you haven't really done any content study yet and you're really just brand new to all of this, then I would strongly recommend you get a copy of Manhattan Prep publishes these two books for the GMAT specifically. They're called Foundations of GMAT Math and Foundations of GMAT Verbal. Foundations of GMAT Math is written with people who have not done hand computation and GMAT style math in many, many years, and they need to relearn that stuff, or in some cases, learn things from the, for the very first time. Like when I was studying for the GMAT, I realized I had never learned how to do long subtraction. So, uh, you know, I guess I have to go back and complain to some of my elementary school teachers. I guess I had other, other priorities in elementary school, apparently, according to them. Um, but I, I relearned it. It was no big deal. And I was, you know, right on track. And although I definitely had a long battle with my GMAT score, which uh, if you want to know more about my story, I'll link a video to that as well. Um, but that's definitely something to, to consider and definitely a great place to start if you're just starting out, just getting some of the basics down. Um, What's interesting about these GMAT books is they also apply very, very well to the GRE. Perhaps obviously, because you have the calculator on the GRE, you don't necessarily need the same strength of hand computation, but those basic math skills like how to do algebra, how to set up equations, how to do exponent calculations, how to manipulate fractions, multiply by fractions, divide by fractions, long division, long subtraction, things like that are less important on the GRE, but all those other concepts are very important, how to factor quadratics, you know, things that you probably haven't thought about in quite some time if you're considering grad school. So those foundations books are great no matter which test you're taking. The foundations of verbal book is more aimed uh, at, at the grammar side of things. A third of it is, is on the grammar side because that's such a big deal on the GMAT. But the other two thirds is based on the reading comp skills and the logic skills I was discussing earlier that are on both exams. And that's, that book is specifically written, written for people whose first language is not English. So if you're an English language learner and you're really struggling with just getting the, the, the verbal sections in either test to click for you, then that's a great place to start. And if you're just starting out from scratch, I'd recommend just starting with those. You don't have to work through the whole book. You can just pick and choose the chapters that you want to work most on. And if you want a little more velocity through those books, just do every other practice problem at the end of each chapter and then find the drill sets that are giving the most trouble and go back and reread the previous chapter if you need a little bit more instruction on that stuff. And that'll help you get through those books in maybe a few weeks, something like that. If you're studying maybe an hour, a couple hours a day, something like that. Um, if you don't need those, if you just want to see where your, your diagnostic sore is cold and you really need to make this decision quickly, then don't worry about those. Just go straight to getting a couple data sufficiency questions under your belt, a couple quantitative comparisons under your belt, because most of the question formats are gonna be familiar enough that you can get a reasonable diagnostic out of yourself. But those two are unique enough and weird enough that I don't think you really wanna be seeing them for the very first time on a diagnostic test. So a little bit of prep on those is fine. No more than a couple hours maximum on each. And then you wanna dive into some practice exams and I'll link some free official practice exams in the description of this video. Um, you get two free for 
the GMAT from MBA.com and two free for the GRE from ETS.org. And you should take one of those as your diagnostic test, in my opinion, because they're a real official score. They use the real scoring algorithms for both exams, and that's going to be the best read on where you are. And what you can do is find a score converter online. I'll also link that in the description of this video so you can check out how does my GRE score and how does my GMAT score compare. Now, I've already listed a bunch of different ways that you can make the decision that I think are the most important decision-making metrics for most people. But the real thing at the end of the day is how are you performing? What, what's your starting score like on both exams? If your starting score is relatively comparable, then use all the information that I just gave you to make your decision. If your GMAT score is wildly higher than your GRE score or your GRE score is wildly higher than your GMAT score, you should definitely double down on the test that you're starting higher with because it's just likely that you are gonna have such an easier time maximizing your score on, uh, on the test that you're just more naturally inclined to do well on. Even if you don't particularly like the format of the exam, you should still double down on that, in my opinion. Now, if you have questions about your specific situation or you're not sure about anything that I've talked about 100% or you want a little bit more clarity on this stuff, just feel free to drop a comment below and I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can get to. You can also direct message me on Instagram at the GMAT strategy and uh, on Reddit and Facebook slash the GMAT strategy if you like, and I'll link those socials in the description as well. And we're still getting our online presence going at Test Crackers, so we may eventually have some Test Crackers handles that you can find us at on Instagram, uh, et cetera, or whatever the social network du jour is. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna be, for the, for the next near future, attempting to publish every single week. So I'm really excited to bring you a lot of valuable content. So please hit the subscribe button if you're interested in more. Next week's series are gonna focus on how to study for the GMAT and how to study for the GRE. And if you're in the market for some live in-person or online classes, then click on the first link in the description and head to our website and check out our class offerings, check out our reviews, check out what our students are saying about us and check out a special price break that you can get just from watching this video. Um, if you are not in the market for a live in-person class or online class and or that's just not in your budget and you're looking to accelerate your studies on the GMAT and or the GRE, just check out my website, the GMAT strategy if you're in that boat or the GRE strategy, which is coming soon if you're in that boat. And I look forward to speaking to all of you soon. In the meantime, just stay positive and stay consistent and you can hit your goal.